Good evening. It is now seven o'clock, so welcome. Uh, those, uh, in case there are people watching from afar, um, this is the, um, what is it we're here for? Oh, yes, petition hearing cabinet member for property, transport, and highways. That's me, Councillor Jonathan Bianco. Um, and um, so I would welcome you both uh, physically and those who may be watching uh, remotely. Um, uh, can I just go through a few uh, minor bits of um, paraphernalia first, which is uh, we are not expecting a fire alarm. If there is one, uh, there are plenty of officers and councillors who will show you the way out. Um, even more councillors now. Uh, if you have a mobile or tablet, well, who doesn't, could I at least ask you to put it on silent? Um, the uh, other thing I would say is that uh, because we're on YouTube, if, if you don't want to be seen or shouldn't be seen, then stay at the back. Um, can I introduce uh, on my far right two officers uh, from the highways team, Poonam Patak, who is head of highways, and Steve Austin, who is traffic, parking, road safety, and school travel team manager. Blimey, that's a mouthful. And on my left is Rebecca Reed from Democratic Services, who will ensure we do things uh, appropriately. Uh, on that note, uh, we can start. Um, the first petition is in respect to Abbotsbury Gardens East Coast. Um, Mr. Matada is Matada is that I hopefully can pronounce you correctly is is present. Um, and just for those who don't know, um, you may speak for up to five minutes. There is a green light showing, or there will be a green light showing when you start, and a yellow light will come on one minute before your time is up, and a red light means you have to stop. You're not obliged to speak for five minutes, but you may speak for up to five minutes. After which, uh, I was going to say, were there any councillors present? I would ask them if they wanted to speak, but there aren't any. Um, and uh, I may or may not ask you questions and may or may not comment. And if there are other people uh, supporting that motion, and I assume, are you two yes, we're, we're Abbotsbury right. residents too? Okay, well, if, if you have something to add, I may ask you if you'd like to speak. Unfortunately, you'll have to come up here because it has to be heard on the microphone so that people um, off-site can hear us. Um, but I would ask that if you do come forward, please add something to it rather than just repeat something we've already had before. So on that note, uh, welcome uh, and um, the floor is yours. Please press the button nice and hard and the light will come on. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Mr. Matada and I've got my neighbours here, Elaine and Dinesh. We're presenting this petition because we're really concerned about the speed at which vehicles travel down our road. Many drivers use Abbotsbury Gardens as a cut through, mostly to access East Coast Road to get to Pinner. We've got many elderly residents and families with young children living on our roads. A number of those young children walk to Cannon Lane Primary School, which is at the end of our road. We feel it's only a matter of time uh, until we have a serious injury or fatality as a result of this speeding. So I contacted our local councillor, Nick Dennis, in December 2023 to voice our concerns. He suggested we uh, gather evidence uh, for, of support for this proposal by conducting a petition. We've obviously done that, and we're here this evening to discuss that. There's 113 households on Abbotsbury Gardens. I knocked on every one of those doors over multiple days. I managed to speak to 74 households, uh, with the remaining householders either not in or not able to answer the door, and I knocked. Uh, Dinesh is one of those, actually wasn't in at the time. Um, 71 out of the 74 that um, I spoke to signed the petition. Um, that's close to 96% of the people I spoke to. The three that I uh, did not sign, only one thought that speeding wasn't an issue. So 96%, I think it's fair to say, is clear and unambiguous support um, for lowering the speed limit to 20 miles an hour. And the depth of feeling that, that they have, we have, um, towards this issue of speeding uh, is palpable. And I've lived on Abbotsbury Garden for 17 years, Dinesh for seven years, Elaine I think was saying 46 years. There's plenty of residents that, lived, uh, that live, have lived on Abbotsbury Gardens for more than 40 years. And the consensus is that speeding's worse now than it's ever been. And we believe that this current upturn and it's really happened in the last two years, it's been very noticeable, is the result of two changes made by Hillingdon Council. The first is the changing of the speed limit on Field End Road through East Coat High Street, and this was lowered to 20 miles an hour in the last couple of years. I've been told because of the introduction of extra pedestrian crossings. 
Um, now, when drivers come north through East Cote on Field End Road at 20 miles an hour and turn into Abbotsbury Gardens, they see a sign telling them that the speed limit is 30 miles an hour. This bizarre situation where drivers turning off a high street are being encouraged to accelerate to 50% higher speed on a residential street is the first part of our problem. The second change is that a £75 fee is now charged for residents parking their cars on the street. This has had a consequence that most households now park their cars on their driveway and there's very few cars parked on the street. So Abbotsbury Gardens now is a long, straight, flat road with no cars parked on either side. It's an invitation for some drivers to speed and that's backed up by data from the Department of Transport which suggests that in so-called free-flowing roads that lack bends, speed humps, cameras and other restrictions, 50% of cars exceed the 50, 30 miles an hour speed limit. And referring to point 10 of the report you produced um, in response to this petition, there's a reference to 20 mile an hour speed limits only reducing the speed by one mile an hour. That statement's slightly misleading. It's more accurate to say that the average speed reduction is one mile an hour. Um, some vehicles reduce their speed by much more than one mile an hour. And that same report, which is known as the Atkins report, states that vehicles travelling at the highest speeds before the introduction of the 20 mile an hour limit have reduced their speed more than those already travelling at lower speeds. A pedestrian hit by a car travelling at 30 miles an hour is eight times more likely to be killed than a pedestrian hit by a car travelling at 20 miles an hour. In addition, for every one mile an hour reduction in average speed, there's a 6% reduction in casualties and injury severity. As also stated in the report, the police are responsible for enforcing speed limits, and as suggested in your initial response to my petition, I had a conversation with a local police officer who told me that the police were under-resourced in terms of personnel and equipment and asked me to send him an email, which I did. I've not heard anything back since. Police presence is not the only way of enforcing speed limits, however, as many residents have cars with dash cam recorders. Last year, more than 33,000 videos were submitted to the police via the uh, National Dash Cam Safety Portal. Over 70% of those videos led to police action, resulting in warnings, penalty points, or prosecutions. To summarize, the changes made by Hillingdon Council have inadvertently created increased hazard for residents of Abbotsbury Gardens. As local authorities have a statutory duty under Section 39 of the 1988 Road Traffic Act to take steps to prevent accidents, we ask for a simple change to harmonise the speed limits on Abbotsbury Gardens and Field End Road to decrease, decrease the risk of fatalities or serious injuries to residents and visitors. Not many people last the five minutes, let them go over it, but anyway, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Um, Matada. Matada. Apologies. Um, I know Abbotsbury uh, um, Gardens. Um, um, I'm in East Coast quite a bit. I, I don't live in East Coast, but I travel there quite a lot, so I do know Abbotsbury Gardens. And, and uh, when this petition came in, I made a point of going to have a look for myself, uh, as, you, as, as I hope you would expect. <laughs> um, and um, I am aware of the things you say. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, I, I was surprised uh, you, you've, someone has organised uh, white lines uh, to be painted uh, over the, uh, in front of the driveways along Abbotsbury Gardens. There's solid white lines in front, which are, which are only advisory. They're not um, uh, compulsory. Um, the uh, white lines of parking. So, so the people in, don't park in the road. The yes, just in front of the drop yes. curbs. Yes, yes. correct. Um, and and I did also notice that actually the the um, the residents parking bays need repainting uh, because it's a bit uh, difficult to see actually where they run and where they don't run now. Uh, but that's something uh, of an aside. Um, uh, unfortunately for you, I'm not a fan of 21 mile an hour zones. Um, and if I'd had anything to do with it, East Coast High Road wouldn't be a 20 mile an hour zone. Uh, in fact, uh, we are looking on a wider basis, not just on East Coast, as to whether we can reverse some of the 20 mile an hour zones that we have uh, installed. Um, I think the fundamental, uh, one of the fundamental concerns I have about 20 mile an hour zones is that they are not enforceable, or they are not enforced. The police, as you have found out already, uh, have little or frankly no interest in enforcing 20 mile an hour zones. Uh, the council has no 
um, authority whatsoever to, to when it comes to speed. Um, it cannot um, erect cameras, uh, buy a speed gun, uh, or, or uh, anything else of that nature. Um, so um, the only places that um, we're currently willing to introduce 20 mile an hour zones, if they're not, are by schools, uh, are literally outside schools. Um, now, I know that won't be very encouraging for you, but um, I thought it good to be uh, at least open and honest about it. Um, we are an outer London borough. We, uh, we, we rely hugely on, on our, our cars, um, and um, keeping those cars moving is, is something we regard as very important. Uh, that doesn't mean they need to speed or should be speeding. Uh, I mean, there is a difference. I fully understand that. But um, it, it is a concern we have, um, particularly as public transport in, in, in the borough is as poor as it is. Um, certainly, if you want to go in and out of London, as you will know, you've got a tube station just around the corner from where you are. Uh, it, it's a quite an easy job to do. But if you want to go up and down the borough, the bus service is somewhere between pathetic and non-existent. Um, so uh, we are very aware that most of our residents need and use cars, and we need to bear that in mind and keep them moving. Um, we might be willing to consider. Uh, um, I have to just add. To, I'll add to that, although you haven't asked for it. Uh, um, uh, we are also fairly reluctant to install more road humps or bumps or Sorry, whatever you want. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think. I've, we've not asked for humps. No, 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 I said you hadn't yeah. asked for humps. And also you're mixing limits and zones because we've asked for a 20 speed limit rather than a 20 mile an hour zone. Well, is what you've frankly, said. they're the same. Um, they're not. Um, we don't, we're not keen on road humps either. Um, we think they have a very limited value. Um, if you've got a big 4x4, four four, you can pretty much ignore them anyway. Uh, but... Um, we find that people petition us for road humps, tables, um, or whatever, and um, end up uh, being dead keen until they get to the point where um, they find out that the hump's going to be outside their house. Uh, and suddenly uh, th their interest uh, evaporates because um, of the associated noise uh, that comes with having a road hump and the pollution. Uh, and uh, we have wider concerns around emergency vehicle access uh, and, and such like. I know you haven't asked for a, a road hump. Uh, what we are prepared to look at um, is uh, we have, uh, you will have seen them I'm sure, um, what are called VAR signs, uh, vehicle activated, I don't remember what the R means. VAS, VAS. VAS, sorry, vehicle activated signs, um, which indicate when you're going too fast and that sort of thing. Uh, and we will, uh, we would look at that. And um, I wasn't going to, but I will um, concede. Um, and what we will do is we will do a, a speed survey down your road, uh, which involves putting a couple of, um, you may have seen them in different places, strips across the road, um, and we monitor it for a period of time, and um, that gives us a, a, a fairly good idea of how people are behaving. Um, so that would be my first uh, suggestion. Uh, we'll review it. Uh, when we've got the results of that speed survey uh, done. Um, uh, a question I would ask in, in that regard is whether you believe the speeding is across the whole length or is it worse at one end than the other or is right in the middle uh, because obviously that would help us design where we put the yeah. uh, test uh, spot. Uh, in any event, we need to put them by a lamppost because we have to chain the thing to a lamppost so someone doesn't nick it. Um, but that's, um, you know, there are plenty of uh, lampposts for us to choose from, so that's, um, that should be uh, possible. Uh, Mr. Austin, do you want to add anything to what I've said? So please do if you want. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. No, um, I, if you're minded to agree to some surveys, perhaps I could ask that uh, the residents just come and see me quickly and, and yeah. indicate on the plan that I've produced where they think the issues are at their worst, and then we can obviously commission those independent surveys, obviously outside of school holidays, but as, as soon as we possibly can. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so that sort of is where I think uh, it's a reasonable first step, but I, I don't want you to get your hopes up that we're going to introduce a 20 mile an hour limit or zone, whichever you prefer, um, because I think that's very unlikely. Can I ask why? I, I, we don't believe that they are something we want to... We is... We the council. We the administration. Um, so the only way that that position would change is if the, the current administration was not the current administration. Probably. Different administration Probably. might have a different view on 20 months. Well, I mean, t times change, uh, so times could change uh, that. Um, uh, I mean, my predecessor as cabinet member for highways uh, um, had a slightly different view. Um, there are a lot of outer London boroughs. In fact, most of the latter, latter London boroughs take a very similar view to ours um, that... that um, that um, we don't believe that they really add, and, and the main reason, the main reason is is that they are not enforced. Well, as I've and they can't be enforced. As I've suggested, if we were to have a dash cam on our cars parked on the road, we would be able to enforce by sending out footage. Well, to the you know, that, that, that's so, sorry. Um, you, you in? Could you, would you like to uh, I'm afraid you'll have to. Yes, please. Sorry. Um, hello, I'm Dinesh Patel, one of the Abbotsbury residents. Um, I think ultimately, yes, 20 miles an hour is something that doesn't appeal with the current, current council. That, that's absolutely fine. I think ultimately the issue we're trying to address is the matter of speed and potential casualty accident in the future, especially having two children. So if there are alternatives that will... Uh, solutions that could be provided to the residents that we could consider following the survey. I think that's something certainly that we'll be happy to take back and have a conversation uh, with our, um, our street and neighbours. Well, look, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to, to have the survey undertaken because that at least will bind in fact whether it is a serious problem or not, and if so, by what degree and, and such like. So. Um, it's quite. It's easy to do. It, it takes a few weeks to organise and, and to I I implement. Um, but you know, within a few months, we would have an answer. Um, and after that, we can look at what we might do um, further. Um, can I yeah, can by all means, uh, Mr. Austin will pass you the, the plan so that you can mark on it. Um, in, in terms of, I mean, I hear what you say about small children. You could say that of every every uh, street in in, in 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 the borough, um, and and unfortunately, the consequence of you, you know we reduce the speed to 20 miles an hour. Uh, when are we going to reduce it to 10 miles an hour? And actually, is it then walking speed with a bloke in front waving a flag? You know, I I, I know that sounds facetious. I don't mean it in that sense, but the, the inevitable consequence is. If you drive at 10 miles an hour, you're less likely to hurt someone than you are at 20 miles an hour. I mean, where does it stop? Yeah. Uh, and there has to be a balance. Uh, I appreciate that you think the balance should be one side and I think it should be somewhere else, but th there has to be a balance. Um, anyway, I think if, if, you'll mark, if the pair of you will mark it up and either give it to Mr. Austin before you leave or send it in afterwards, it's entirely up to you, um, that would be a useful uh, starting point. We'll undertake the survey. We'll let you know, uh, we'll, we'll disclose the results, we're not going to hide them, um, and then you, uh, and then we will keep you informed as to where, we're where we, will, we would go after that. And just make one final point, um, I mean you, you made the point there that you know, your priority is to make sure that cars are moving, lots of people, lots of people in Hillingdon, every one of us has a car on our road, we all have nice large driveways where we park them. So I, I can't dispute that, but we also have other modes of transport. As you pointed out, there's a tube station around the corner. It takes an extra 10 seconds to travel from one end of Abbotsbury Gardens to the other. I think that's worth uh, someone's life. Uh, Councillor, just, just what? I'm afraid you'll have to go over there. Apologies. Yes. Hello, I'm, I'm Elaine I'm in Abbotsbury. Um, could I just ask, um, the, the, like the smiley faces that light up and say what speed, there, there's one down in Old East Coat near a garage on the corner, and I must admit, you know, going along there, 
you know, I always look at it. They've only just put put it there recently, with the, and the speed goes up or down, and it smiles at you. Um, I don't know why it's it's there, but if it's on a because it's on a quite a, a bend there. But um, would that be something that that goes into you know we could have in our road yeah that's that's when I mentioned a VAS that, yeah, that, that is a VAS is, is sorry VAS, I perhaps should yes. have been more clear as to what a VAS but we was could have but that sort of thing because yes, I haven't ever seen system. one in any other residential road yeah we, well gen there are a few we've got one in um, uh, the other side of uh, Ryslip I can't think of the name of the road off the top of my head but there is there are a few uh, certainly we do do that yeah um, I mean, and it has some impact uh, we, we've had to be careful about the sort of VASs we put in uh, because in the old days you had one that actually recorded the speed you were going at and there was no top limit on it and of course that then that then provided um, entertainment for some of our younger, less, uh, more enthusiastic drivers yeah. to see how high a number they could register. Oh. Uh, so now uh, it's it's sort of, you know, it, it might say you're doing 35, but it's not going to say you're doing 55. Um, so um, well, just it, to, it, I know you said yeah. just to make sure we didn't say the same thing, but just to, I mean, as I said, I I have lived in yeah. the road for 46 years and my with my family, and you know we literally do hear a runway, you know, we just hear them go zoom, you know, and it they go so fast and you know, it is a it is a real concern because we are such a straight runway road that people just are idiots and think that they can go Well, I mean, but you know, what one of the other things we are considering and I'm not talking in necessarily in respect of your road, but but um uh, we do notice that in in a number of residential roads where there have been uh, residence parking schemes um, introduced in the past, which are not being used, um, we are considering whether we should now take some of them out um, and return the, the road to normal um, use. Um, uh, the point of it, in some cases, and, and your road would be such an example, uh, is that when there are lots of cars parked, it does slow the traffic of down. Course, of course. Um, and, and it's a natural deterrent. Uh, um, particularly if there are cars parked both sides and, and people have to slow down or stop or give way to, to let people through. Uh, there are pluses and minuses to yeah. all of these. An things. alternative to that is to take the £75 charge away and then we could uh, park our own <laughs> yes, car. But, well, you'll be, you'll be pleased to know, uh, as I'm, I'm sure you know already, that uh, Hillingdon's charges, um, both in terms of council tax and the charges we make to residents, are amongst the lowest in London. They are lower than any of our neighbouring boroughs. Um, and uh, even the £75 is lower than uh, most of our neighbouring, uh, all of our neighbouring boroughs actually, uh, and our and our and our council tax is significantly below uh, our neighbouring. So you do get good value, yes, um, we've, we've but nonetheless we we have to uh, uh, we have to collect money um, to provide were, the services. We, we, we were do. led to believe when we were told about this parking scheme that we would have always have the one household would have a free Well, that one. was then, I'm afraid. Yes, uh, I um, know. But you know, times a, change, unfortunately. But just that it didn't even come in at 50, it came in at 75. Well, we, we, would, uh, we would like to be in a position where we didn't have to charge anybody for anything, but uh, the reality of life, unfortunately, is that um, pressures on our budgets, much like everybody else's budgets, um, are such that we need to be more realistic. And, w and we are the... I think we're 28 out of 32 London boroughs in terms of our charging level as in at the bottom, 28. So overall, our charges are very low. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's the rough with the smooth, I'm afraid. But overall, you're getting uh, good value. Could, could, could I just, for myself, could I just ask very, very quickly, you said about the, the, um, they don't enforce the, the, um, the limit. Yes. When, when you go into another area like sort of South Hall and that, there's, they have these speed cameras and things. How come... They, they, they well, have ca speed cameras for... OK, uh, so the, the speed cameras are under the control of the police. Uh, the police uh, will only install them where they think they're going to earn lots of revenue. Oh. So you find those speed cameras I on, on main roads. Right. Um, so, for example, I know there's one outside Ealing Hospital because I've been down there and seen it. Well, not there's that one in Rainers Lane. Uh, there, are, there are lots of them, yeah. but they're on main roads. They're not tucked down residential oh, roads no. because in residential roads you're not going to collect any money and speed cameras are very expensive. Uh, and um, and uh, in any event, the revenue goes to uh, the, the police and, and not the council. Um, so um, not that that uh, particularly pertains in this case when you're talking about reducing speed, but that's, that's what happens with cameras. Um, 
and, and that's where we are. Anyway, hopefully that sets that. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you. You're happy you. with the recommendations that I've agreed? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you could mark that, I think, and then if you either leave it on the side there, so that'd be great. Thank okay. you. Okay, apologies, we're running a bit late. Uh, petition in respect of Tudor Road Hayes, Mr. Remen. Oh, he's not here, is he? No. He's not here, but you've got a statement. Okay, so uh, Rebecca's going to read out the statement. Uh, I see we have councillors present, and then I'll ask uh, one of you to speak. But let's have the statement first. Go. Dear Democratic Services, I am writing to you as I cannot, um, as I cannot unfortunately attend the meeting today, 16th of April 2024, and would like to address the escalating issues of parking congestion and traffic safety on Tudor Road. As a resident, I've witnessed the mounting challenges that these issues present to our community's well-being. Parking congestion on Tudor Road has reached critical levels throughout the day and night, including weekends, creating frustration and safety concerns. Sometimes people would come and park on the road from the neighbouring areas and go on holidays as there are no such restrictions on Tudor Road. The lack of available parking spaces not only inconveniences residents but also obstructs emergency services which poses risks to, pede to pedestrian safety. Additionally, the absence of traffic calming measures has I exacerbated the problem, leading to speeding vehicles, abandoned vehicles. This, endanger this endangers the life of residents and other road users, necessitating immediate action to address the safety concerns. To alleviate these issues, I propose the implementation of parking permit system to regulate parking and priorities access for residents, especially after 5 p.m. on Monday to Friday and weekends. Furthermore, the installation of traffic calming measure, such as speed bumps, to mitigate speeding and enhanced road safety at Tudor Road. I urge the Democratic Services Department to consider and prioritize these measures to improve the quality life for Tudor Road residents and ensure the safety of our community. Your prompt attention and action on this matter is greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Salim Raymond. Good, thank you. Which one of you would like to speak? Chair, if I may start, and if I miss anything, they we might don't need, We don't need to. 20 minutes on the subject. No worries, we won't take long. So, uh, before Mr. Salim Rahman's uh, petition came in, there was a petition on 15th July 2023. It was an e-petition seeking speed bumps on Tudor Road. Before that, on in June, there was an, a letter that I received from a resident, which was again put forward to uh, the resident's members' inquiries, and it said, as I'm writing this email, yet another serious accident happened second time in two days. Can you please do something before someone dies? As a resident, I suggest a speed bump and a camera would reduce the impact, but awareness or clear signs will also help. Uh, the concern that Mr. Rahman has raised and our visit to the Tudor Road is the same as the previous uh, case was. So it is a road that connects from one end to the Judge Heath Lane and to the uh, other Kingsway Road. So it's large roads and Tudor Road is a, used as a connecting road to Judge Heath Lane. Uh, incidentally, there are, there are cars parked on a very narrow road on both sides and yet uh, there are issues of speedings and there are incidents happening which are uh, causing a lot of safety hazards on the road. When I went around and looked, there, there were a lot of vehicles parked on both sides and we still had to stop for a vehicle which came at a great speed uh, right uh, facing us. So uh, that surprisingly hasn't deterred people who are speeding on the road, despite the fact that it's a very narrow road and it's parked on both sides. Uh, the solution that uh, they are after is uh, some sort of traffic, traffic calming measures. And uh, some of them have said speed bumps, some of them have suggested reduced speed limits. Uh, so it's up 
to us all to work out a solution which works for the residents. It answers their safety and speeding concerns as, as much as possible by whatever means we can because it's about their safety. Thank you. Either of you two want to add something to this? I may. Um, so uh, I think we all three would be um, in favour of calming measures. It's mainly probably speed humps, which are uh, notoriously sort of slowing traffic down, and they they don't. Um, I think the council would have a budget for that if they are in a series of bumps. It's a very long road, and um, even with cars parked on both sides, no one is stopping there. A lot of residents complain that they have suffered damage to their vehicles, like losing their wing mirrors or scratches, uh, but also it's dangerous because they, they cannot cro cross the road safely. Um, so we figured speak humps would be beneficial here. Uh, the second issue, the lack of parking. Um, so we are not sure if we are advocating uh, for um, for the scheme, just because it will not guarantee anyone enough parking, because there's similar situation on the adjacent roads where there are a lot of terraced houses, um, and because some of the houses have still small gardens, uh, they don't park in front, they just park on the road. Um, so we think that we might need um, to do another sort of survey among the residents because the number of petitioners that sign is quite small if you compare to the number of houses in the road. So we might need to investigate further what majority residents would like. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, yeah, an informal consultation to, to get a sense of um, what people feel about parking management would be helpful. It is a very broad road. I think you'll get a greater response maybe than, than the, the petition has, uh, has particularly had. In terms of the speeding, we know this is a recurring theme of residents petitioning around, um, around speeding. We've heard your comments on the previous um, uh, petition. So I, I'm wondering if, if there is a combination, if there was an ability for a parking management scheme if there is a way to move some of the bays so that they would create not a slal and that would be terrible in terms of skiing but but just a, a bit of a deterrent if there was support from the residents um the the other matter for me is is, is just when it, any um speed monitoring uh, just to look at sometimes not necessarily the average speed but those moments when we get the higher speeds because this is one of those roads where people not everybody, but a few will speed at great speed, and it's those that bring the greatest concern rather than the average speed, because there will be some of those days when it's quite blocked up because of time of day, etc., and it makes it a little bit harder. I hope that's a helpful contribution. Uh, well, thanks. Um, yeah, you've, you've heard my comments both uh, earlier tonight and on previous occasions. Um, turning, however, firstly to the, to the matter of um, uh, parking, um, you, you will know, but I suspect that the residents may not fully appreciate that, that if we introduce a parking management scheme here, it will result in less parking spaces. Uh, it always does because of the engineering aspect uh, to it and the requirements in terms of the size of bays and such like. Um, you're perfectly right, of course, in respect of, um, well, engineering. We, we could certainly create... Um, you know this offsetting, which might, which might in itself act as a deterrent, but that would res probably result in even more loss of parking. Um, so, uh, I mean, yes, we can consider it, but do you really want it? I think, or do they really want it? Is, is really where I would, re really where I would ask the question, uh, because um, uh, that will be the outcome. Now, um, and and what, of course, will happen here, because. Uh, the obvious question I, uh, well, one of the first questions I asked was, was are we adjacent to or almost part of an existing um, parking management scheme? And the answer is we're not. This, this is a sort of fresh spot. So the next thing that will undoubtedly happen is if we install one along here, 
it will um, it will be five minutes before the the people in the next uh, roads either way either side uh, petition uh, you and say um, or petition us and say um, can we have it too because these schemes always creep um, so you know I, I think I mean uh, we we can undertake a, a, a survey on that but I just sort of. Perhaps you want to have a chat with Mr. Raymond and, and see if that's really where he wants to go. Um, I'm not, you know, we can do it, but it comes at a price. Um, in terms of the speeding element, uh, again, uh, as I discussed earlier, I think the first step is to let's have some uh, speed monitoring. It does also tell you, it does tell you the average, but it does tell you the range. So we can see if someone's belting along there at 60 miles an hour, uh, just as we can see if it's a articulated lorry coming. I mean, it's quite, it's, for, for two strips of thing across the road, you get quite sophisticated answers. Um, so I think that's, you know, got to be the first sensible step because that is, we're, we're then much more informed uh, as to the true nature of the, of the beast. Um, you've heard my arguments against 20 miles an hour. Um, um, you know, if you can if you can encourage your local coppers to go down there and, and, and point the speed gun, assuming they've got one that actually works, and, and I know in north of the borough there are several places where, in theory, they've got a gun but it doesn't actually work, so it's off being recalibrated, sort of indefinitely. Uh, then then you'll you'll probably have more success than 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 any other way of stopping people speeding. Um, and you know my view on hunts, which is that everybody's dead in favour of them until they find it's outside their house, and then all of a sudden they're not quite so keen uh, because of the noise. And we've certainly had instances elsewhere where we've installed a hump after much debate in the past, and five minutes later the residents are banging on the door saying, can we take it away because of the noise that's created, you know, with lorries and vans and particularly, particularly skip lorries uh, seem to be uh, top flavour when it comes to making noise. So uh, there are issues. Um, you know, maybe we can go with the VAS here. Uh, uh, we're certainly buying quite a few of them at the moment, um, and they do have some deterrent effect. Um, they're never, look, the, 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 the problem, unfortunately, is they're never going to stop some young, over-enthusiastic over driver. Perhaps I'm pointing at a young, but it seems to be mainly that, uh, deciding he can get down the road at 60 miles an hour. Um, but um, it is certainly worth looking at. Um, so I think that would seem to be the appropriate um, uh, order of, of things. Let's let's do the speed survey. Um, come and have a look at the um, map, or we'll give you the map, and you can point where you want to have the um, the um, things installed. Um, I think who's going to talk to the residents about a, 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 a traffic? We'll do the, we'll do it, um, the parking. Subject to, to, to you moving the uh, recommendation. Well, I can move it, yeah. We'll, we'll possibly, we'll I mean, we're happy to, yeah. unless, I mean, we can ins instigate that, but if you want to, um, if you want to talk to them before we do that, in case they decide they don't want it, then, you know, or, or we, look, we can go to the residents and say, hey, we're going to put a parking scheme in. Uh, and obviously, you, as you know, we don't put it in unless we get a majority in favour. So, um, up to you. And I mean, in, and in real terms, um, would it be helpful to give the council some information about the parking schemes they could share with the residents? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that'd be good. Um, Mr. Austin's got a bit of background info he can let you have to share with residents in terms of parking schemes and, and the benefits and disbenefits, which uh, you may want to share with your um, residents. Um, and we take it from there. And, and, and when we've got the speed survey results back, we'll, we'll share them and, and, and discuss what we might usefully do going from there. Um, I just think installing, well, you've heard it in any event, I think installing a 20 mile an hour zone is a waste of time, um, simply because nobody enforces it. Uh, uh, you know, and I just don't think they work um, in, in real terms. But let's do the speed survey. Let's see where we go. Yeah, do you want us to say something further? Um, so, um, Councillor Core has spent a bit of time talking with the resident and the petition now. Um, our, our one concern is that because it's such a uh, populated road and we don't have the full voice of the road from the petition, not that the petition hasn't tried to do that, that actually going for the in, informal consultation of every household would give a much better sense than trying to draw from, from different parts of the road. 
um, and in terms of the um, any limit or speed tables, we understand the impact that would have on the wider that part of the, you know the section of Hayes because um, then there's just another option where someone can fly down, and so actually some uniformity across all would be a lot better. That is the other point you actually you touched on, which is which is we stop a problem here and create one somewhere else. Um, uh, I've got I've got a first class example of that in my ward where, where uh, after much insistence we put speed humps down one road uh, some while back and, and it's just created havoc in, in, in two others anyway you happy with that uh, so are you happy with the recommendations I've made everybody good thank you very much and, and you'll let Mr Raymond know what's um, been decided for you good. okay so that takes us to um, item three which is uh, Arlington Drive, Mrs. Gettings, that is you. Steve, get lost, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, it's ha you've been stuck here longer no, than no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. No. Miss Gettings, I I'm assuming you heard. Well, maybe you heard what I said. You have up to five minutes to speak. You're yeah. not obliged, and you're not obliged. Pardon, I can't speak myself. You're not obliged to speak for five minutes, but you may speak for up to that time. Uh, after which, I may ask you some questions. Uh, you have two um, supporters with you. Um, if they want to add something that isn't just a repetition of what you've already said, I'll be happy to hear from them. Uh, you don't have a local councillor here, so um, I can't ask them to speak. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. Thank you, Sylvia Gattins. Good evening and thank you for this hearing. It was a coincidence that when I got your notification of the hearing that I was in the dentist having the last part, I hope, of my front two implants put in as I lost one front tooth and broke another front tooth. A very long haul as it took 18 months since my fall in Arlington Drive on uneven paving stones. The cost so far has been over £5,000. I now walk with a stick, mainly in the road, as I have lost my confidence in walking, which used to give me great pleasure and keep me fit. Our road has a lot of footfall, apart from residents, 45 houses, people going to and from the H13 bus stops, dock walkers, routes to Whiteheath and Bishop Winnington schools, and the local shops, Howlett's Lane. Certainly elderly Certain elderly residents do not walk out now with or without their carers as the pavements are too dangerous. My sister-in-law damaged her knee at nearly the same place as I did. Children have fallen off bikes and scooters causing injuries. The particular paving stone has been relayed, but the rest of the road is awful. We have lived here for over 45 years and many residents much longer. One resident is over 101, my friend's neighbour, and walks the length of our bungalow and garden rather than venture out. We also have residents who do the annual horticultural show open gardens. My husband uses a buggy and finds it very bumpy ride and goes in the road, which he shouldn't, I know. Perhaps you could use the monies you are getting from the sale of assets like the golf courses and the library. It is high time something was done to eradicate the dangers in this road and minimise full any minimise future accident claims. Our pavements are not fit for purpose. Please replace them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do either of you two want to add something at this point or would you rather wait? Uh, the only thing I would add is because we've got trees there now, road, which are very nice trees, that does cause the pavements to move with the roots. So uh, I do attend the uh, Residents Association in Ricelet, and there was a councillor who gave a lecture not long ago about the advantages now of using tarmac rather than, u than using paving stones. So uh, if we go, if, if you look at the road where what was this, is it Fairchild, Fairchild Avenue, where, where, the, where the paving was maybe uh, replaced about three years ago? Uh, well that would be a good example of, I think, how I would like our road to look. Okay, so I don't, I don't know the road you're 
It's Arlington Drive. No, 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 no. I know Arlington. Oh, the, the, the road. Fairfield. Right? Fairfield. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I can't. Yeah. No, no. I know or, roughly where it is, but yeah. I can't picture. I think it's Fairfield. I can't picture right. the uh, yeah. the road surface. I know Arlington. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know Arlington Drive, and and yeah. obviously, as I said to the previous yeah. uh, uh, parties, uh, when this petition. When I get a petition like this, one of the first things I do is go and look for myself. That's very good. So I know I know Arlington Drive. Um, do you want the good news or the bad news? I suppose is 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 really uh, what I'd like to say. Um, Every resident, by the way, has signed the petition. Sorry, yes. Who's made the comment. Thank, thank you. I've, I've listened to you, um, if you wouldn't mind. Um, as a council, we are spending more on our roads and pavements this year than we have in many years, uh, and it is an upward trajectory. Uh, nonetheless, by uh, area, we are the second largest uh, council in um, London. Um, I think Bexley, or is it Bexley? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Bromley, maybe, is, is slightly bigger. Uh, and, and we have, therefore, the longest uh, stretch of road surface and pavements uh, to um, uh, of, of pretty much every council in in London. Uh, so the um, upkeep of them is is no insignificant uh, task. Um, we invest uh, regularly. We ha and we and we undertake surveys of all our streets on a regular basis. Uh, and by streets I mean pavements as well. Uh, and indeed, we have just completed an annual, well, a biannual survey, uh, which we put out to a third-party uh, specialist who, who literally travels every road in the borough, assessing their condition, uh, making recommendations. And um, traditionally, how we approach uh, their repair uh, is uh, clearly uh, in order of um, urgency, if I can describe it thus. So the worst ones get done first, and the best ones get done last um, and that is um, and that calculation is flavoured if that's the right term uh, by usage so um, the pavement in just to be ridiculous the pavement in High Ricelip High Street which has lots of people up and down every day will get will get replaced quicker than the pavement in Arlington Drive or a, a quiet little street somewhere else in, in, the, in the, the borough um, in uh, um, what, what we can do and what I asked officers to do again when uh, this petition uh, item came forward was to look at the pavement and see um, what they thought um, an up to date uh, view uh, and the, the good news therefore is that we have identified um, several local spots if that's appropriate term uh, where uh, we can do a bit of minor repair work to, to improve the, the, the flow um, we have 10, is it 10 or 8? Eight? 8 or 10 highway inspectors who spend their life walking the streets of the borough that is their job um, and I've been out with them um, and um, they um, walk the streets uh, and pick up all the defects and um, and I mean literally measuring them uh, where appropriate and um, uh, any defects that hit a certain level are dealt with immediately or very shortly uh, the crews come out and, and adjust them where they find them now you're going to appreciate that uh, with a borough as big as ours um, uh, we aim to we aim to and achieve inspection of all our roads once a year uh, and the busier ones more frequently uh, but all our roads once a year. And I would guess that somewhere like Arlington Drive is, is on the once a year uh, um, routine. So clearly uh, things can, uh, well, will deteriorate. You know, a dry summer, we, we all, north half of the borough is on clay, so the dry summer will cause pavements to move. Uh, and it is one of those, uh, it is partly that factor that uh, drove me to um, change how we replace pavements now from flagstones to uh, tarmac um, in um, in general cases um, there are exceptions but in general cases um, because it's more flexible and, and frankly it's cheaper and therefore we can we can um, we can do more pavements uh, for the same amount of money 
Um, I suppose the bad news is that, so, so the good news therefore is that we will uh, be attending to a number of uh, defects on your pavement in the near future. Uh, but in terms of replacing it, I'd have to tell you that you currently sit somewhere like 376 uh, uh, in, in terms of urgency um, of our pavement replacement program, and that would push you seven years from now. Um, and that's uh, assuming nothing more happens. Um, we invest a great deal of money. I think this year we're investing nine million, uh, improving our roads and pavements. Um, so it's not an insignificant sum. Um, the unfortunate thing uh, in general, which all councils suffer from, is that roads pro rata are much cheaper to repair than pavements. Um, you can get nice big machines on roads uh, that rip it up and put down a new layer and in a day and a bit you've done the whole thing. Uh, pavements are much more complicated because there isn't the machinery available to, to just sort of trundle along. Uh, so they are much more um, manually, require much more manual input and that makes them much more expensive to do. That doesn't mean we don't do them, it means uh, that pro rata we can do less of them. Um, uh, but we do aim to, um, well, we all, when there is a, a fault, you know, a, a significant fault, we aim to deal with it immediately. Um, uh, we will aim to, the next step up from that, if you like, is to do a short stretch, uh, because there may be, you know, five yards of pavement that actually needs uh, significant repair rather than the whole thing, um, and, and then sort of the ultimate is that then we do the whole lot. Um, but um, uh, truthfully, um, your pavement is not at a level where we would be doing anything more than minor repairs to uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, now, I'm sorry if that's not what you want to hear, but that is me being honest with you in terms of, um, of where we uh, sit um, with our program. Sorry, you wanted to say something further. Uh, does it have to be? There's a good few five yards needing done. Um, cracked pavements, raised pavements, humps. Well, there are very strict criteria, and I'm sure uh, uh, my my. Uh, stones. Uh, 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 there are very strict. Thinking. Yeah, Thinking. there are very strict criteria around uh, what is an acceptable um, 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 degree of movement. Uh, do, you, do you want to say a few words? So let, let yeah, we have. A, yeah, based on our reactive maintenance policy. Um, is available in our website as well. Uh, it's 25 mil is our trip on the footway uh, for the repair to be done. So that's what we look at in terms of reactive work. In terms of planned work, they have a different criteria we look at, and each defects are given with the number um, of sort, and then it calculates the total value for each road. So based on what Councillor Bianco has said, the Chair has said, uh, Arlington Drive is 300 plus sort of list. Although we also applied higher criteria for Arlington because of the petition received. If you look at only the condition, it's far lower, it's 700 plus, just on the condition. But when we applied other factors which we do as a value management prioritization criteria, it goes up to 300. So currently it's not too high in terms of doing the resurfacing, but as uh, the Chair has said, we could look at doing the planned patch uh, works. Can I just say something about the repairs to uh, the pavements? Quite often repair, if, if there is a difference between the, the paving stones like that, quite often just a bit of tarmac is put along the side of the, of the uh, paving stones between the two and that can present more problems than it actually solves uh, you know the, in my opinion they're, they're trip hazards some of these uh, tarmac strips that you put across you know is there a better way of repairing pavements than putting a, a strip of tarmac across it the strip of tarmac should be only temporary measure. If we have done in Arlington Road, then we need, to, yeah, we need to review that because that's a, just a temporary measure. 
to remove the trip um, for time being. It should be the slap should be lifted up and then um, laid back again. So we can have a look on that. Uh, we, we, we will make sure officers uh, take a good look and where there are any um, defects that uh, exceed the base criteria, uh, we'll deal with them immediately. Um, and if that includes those bits of tarmac, then, then they'll include that bit of tarmac. Uh, you touched on trees. I mean, it's, it's a problem across the borough. Mm. Uh, people like street trees. Um, um, some of the trees in the past weren't the best trees to put in because of the way their roots run. Um, but um, short of tearing them out, you know, we have to try and find ways around them, um, you know, around the problem. Uh, and and uh, but they are an imp they do impact. Uh, the level of a of a payment, and of course, as do as do trees in people's front gardens. You know, they can mm. they can also come out under their fence or wall and and, and the roots uh, cause problems. But um, generally speaking, um, you know, th th those are the issues. But we will. Um, I mean, what I can say to you is, we we will ensure that officers uh, have a good look at the pavements and where there are defects, uh, lift the slabs and relay them so that they are at least uh, within tolerance. Um, and, and if there are bits of tarmac that need to be taken out to eat whatever the preference is, is, is we will do so. But in reality, uh, replacing the pavement is, is not on the, on, on the agenda for the foreseeable future. It will get done when it gets to the top of the pile. Mm -hmm. Seven um, years and I would, and I, well, I would tell you that we are, we are investing a lot more than a lot of our neighbours. Mm -hmm. And, and um, there are a million things to spend our money on. Of course, and of course. pavements is just one of them. Yeah, um, of and um, getting that balance right is 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 always a problem. But I mean, I can tell you, for example, we're investing between two and three million more this year on pavements and roads than we were last year. So the trajectory is upwards. Um, Could I just say that one of the factors when I fell was the fact that they come and cut the grass and they go up and down and up and down and as fast as they can and the grass is everywhere and cause, because the ed edges are never done next to the pavement that covers any defects that are there the raising of the paving slabs actually so that that didn't that doesn't help but that's a different department I uh, understand uh, it, it is and and, and um, yes well uh, grass cutting isn't always an exact science and I would always encourage householders uh, who, who, who have the urge to trim it themselves as well. Mm. Um, we do. I used to. I'm glad to hear it. He's always out there picking up yeah, water yeah, and, doing, and doing stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's not a perfect solution, but that, that's, that's what I propose. Um, so what, what would the time scales be with regards to somebody looking down, coming down the road and looking at the problems? Month? Yeah, yeah, because the last uh, from the report last inspection was done in January 24, mm -hmm. but I can ask them to, to do ad hoc inspection for now. Okay. We'll, we'll get someone down in the next couple of weeks okay. to inspect, and, and any defects they pick up will be dealt with in a similar period. So I would hope within a month to six weeks uh, we will have picked up any um, defects that um, okay. are outstanding. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. thank you. And that closes the meeting.